Hello and welcome to Etude number 11, part 2. This is part of the Villa Lobos 12 and 12 challenge. 12 etudes across 12 months and we're going to dive straight into the main points here for the second section. Welcome to microstudy number 5. The main points here are the melody is a tenor melody across strings 4 and 5 and is generally played with a thumb rake. So that means two notes played very quickly. If needs be, practice the melody notes on their own without the accompaniment to nail the syncopation and to nail the placement and to hear it. As usual, you're going to have to laser ahead uh, because there are quite a few big shifts here. Do not stress too much about the squeaks. The squeaks are there part of the music. It is just accepted that that's going to be there because you're on the bass strings. But top tip here is to just release ever so slightly as you slide and try and slide across the fleshy bit of the left hand fingers, not the pads where your calluses are. Melody first, bring the accompaniment down. So do not play the accompaniment and the melody loud. Make sure that that accompaniment comes down and that is good right hand fine control. And in this section, we have the beginning of the samba polyrhythms, which is known as the timbal bass line, which you probably know as the habanero. Bar 18 is where Villalobos hints at it, and in the next section, we'll see him develop it fully. This bass line is integral to Latin American music. You will find it in everything from the Caribbean basin. So please, if needs be, if you want a refresher, a link is going to pop up now to an awesome lesson on Roland Dienz's Tango in Scar, which uses this and takes it to a very funny conclusion. Guide fingers here are fingers two and three up and down the strings. Okay, one final point here. For the most part, I'm using the 1928 manuscript. Now, most people have this edition at home. A few are starting to get to this edition. It is worthwhile mentioning that the 1928 manuscript differs quite significantly from this edition. This middle section is rearranged in 28 and has an extra nine bars to it. Not in this edition. You won't find it anywhere. You can, however, find it right at the back of this edition. For some reason, Zaganti has put it on the very, very last page where they've done it nice and clearly in a modern typeset, which is fantastic. There'll be a link that pops up now to this missing section so that you can dive in and learn it if you want. It has a fantastic extra idea there with harmonics and uh, the material is just ever so slightly rearranged differently. Or you could look at it as the original in the 1928 and this is just a rearrangement and a concise rearrangement of that middle section. The choice is yours. Let's dive in and check out the first microstudy. Welcome to microstudy number five. Let's remind ourselves of the two bars previous to this. Bar 13. So from this point here, we have the first finger is going to slide down from the C natural, which we had in bar 14, to a B. And notice I'm using a thumb rake to really dig in so that that B sings out above the open B into the A sharp. So that you really get a sense of a change here. So from the um, bar 14 previous. There we go, we've switched from the E and B open strings to the B and G open strings with that one F sharp with the accompaniment and we're using finger two for the F sharp. Most of this is most of the melody line is going to be done with the right hand thumb, so keep that in mind. And you really want it to sing out above the accompaniment, so drop the I M fingers down. second finger is going to float down to the F natural, so it's F natural and D flat. And again, your thumb is going to rake across two strings at the same time as, so you're going to do this, jim, jim, it's like a pincer movement or a crab movement, 
if you've never practiced this, give it a bash on its own and make sure that it's not this. Those are going to be really low. So that you can only really hear the melody. Right, from this point on, it's the second and third fingers that are going to do most of the work in this section. And from here, we have to laser ahead to fret 8 or fret 7, depending on which one you want to target. But it's an F and an A with the second and third fingers. You're going to slide up from the D flat or C sharp. You're going to slide up again. And then you're going to slide all the way back down to C. So, first dyad is F and A at fret 8, 7. And the next dyad is G and B at fret 10 and 9. And then we're going to move down to the last dyad, which is a C chord. For those of you that are interested, this is just Villalobos shifting that C chord. And there you can really hear what he's doing from a full harmonic point of view. It kind of it kind of ruins it a little bit. Right? It kind of ruins it a little bit. Right, let's try it again with the right notes. Answers on a postcard for that old chestnut of a cadence there. And that is it in essence. Villalobos is still in 2-2, two -two, and 2-2 two -two is just a faster version of 4-4. Four -four. The 2-2 two -two is purely on the paper just to help you count. So instead of going 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, you go 1, 2, 1. So it gives it that 2 and a bar feel, but it makes it easier to count. So you're counting minims, not crotchets, or half bars as opposed to beats, which makes it easier. So let's take a look at this now in slow motion. Welcome to micro study number six. Main points here are the right hand for the majority of all of the section is the controlling factor, but in micro study number six, we get that sextuplet arpeggio into a rake. So you need to practice that separately if you've never done this before, and I suggest you do it on open strings, really getting the right hand secure. First of all, get it in sets of three so that you can get the triplet. One, two, three. PPI and then the next three M A A and then A A A so then you put it into two sets of threes trying to make sure that you're to the beats. And then I would practice the back two so that it's one, two, three, one, two, three. Just remember that that E is on an off beat. So that when you put the C back in and listen to it, triplets and then you put it all together so that it's just a whole series of making sure that you really get that triplet feel. Now this obviously has popped up in the previous um, etude in etude number 10 but as a series of five so it's not something new to Villalobos but it's definitely a new technique that is part of the style here. So practice it in string sets of threes and then add the threes together until you can make their entire arpeggio rake idea work. Point number two, the right arm plays a very important, uh, the right arm plays a very important part of this idea. 
if you notice while I'm doing this, my right hand, the rake action from the A is controlled by the arm swinging backwards over the bat. Now I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit here. Back in. So you've got to get used to this right arm mechanism moving like that, and it's not moving from the shoulder so much as the shoulder blade and the back muscles that are just, you're pulling your arm around, your elbow around the back of the guitar. Be aware of it, practice it, that is where the main movement comes from. You're not doing a, a staggered idea, it's more like an electric guitar sweep. So you're doing a sweep with your A finger. And the right hand, uh, the right arm, from the elbow round is doing the main action. This pretty much just stays nice and still. Let's dive in and check out this micro study. Welcome to micro study number six. So we left it off at that C chord and then we have this lovely sextuplet rake which I've already gone over how to practice but I would you can have a look now as I do it. So See my arm moving backwards. I'm really pushing some more energy into that low E because the E has to ring on over the next so that you get this wonderful clash as Villa Lobos moves it across the dyads again. So make sure that you've got that E ringing out and over. Again, it's classic Villa Lobos. Everything sort of uh, clashes against the open strings of the guitar. He really, really exploits the open strings of the guitar in all of his music. Other than that, there is not much to this micro study. So we're C on its own. And this is obviously, so here's your quavers. And two, and ducky, 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 ducky. So your triplets are on the quavers. So So if that's the way that it works for you, keep the pulse of the quavers going in your mind and, and get it used to it. But actually, nine times out of ten, once you've got this, you're just going to play that as one idea, a rake. But before that, you need to sort of count it a little bit. So this is this micro study in slow motion. Welcome to micro study number seven, the last one for this video. This is where the timbal bass line kicks in. The timbal bass line is... And at a slow tempo, you will know it as the habanera. Now, I've already done quite a few articles on this Latino style, so there's a link in a pop-up now with uh, an awesome series on Roland Dion's Tango and Scar because he takes that uh, habanero idea and bass line to a funny conclusion. But for the most part, this bass line will be found in pretty much anything that comes out of the Caribbean basin or anything that has Latino-based music in it. And it obviously is derived from the African influence due to slavery in the music which is what makes Latin music so unique and what makes it so exciting at the same time. Let's dive in and check out this last micro study. Welcome to micro study number seven, the Timbao Baseline micro study. Uh, the first bar of it, it starts at bar 22. It's just a variation on bar 18. So in bar 18, we had the... But here Villa Lobos has chucked in a little bit extra. Here Villa Lobos has chucked in a little bit extra. We have an E flat and G. So it's still the same idea, still dyads. And from the previous micro study, we were left on the D flat and F. It is just uh, a shift up one tone to the E flat. Fret six and fret five. And then we shift up another tone to the F and A fret 8, fret 7, and then we shift up another tone to G. 
And this idea obviously is whole tone scale. It is an idea that permeates Villa Lobos's music, especially in the study, so keep an eye out for it. So again, we're up here at G, you're gonna have to laser ahead to get back down to C. And that is it. The only thing to really keep in mind here is to make sure that this timbal bass line, the on, off, on, on aspect of it really hits home above. So if I go from the E flat, If needs be, stick a metronome on. So this is the Sound Bremer free app. It's a great app. Check it out. And then remember, it's... This lost is on an off beat, so be bah. And then if you were to put that all together, it sounds like this. And that is it. That is pretty much the first half of the second section. The next video, we're going to dive in deeper into the timbal bass line and into how Villalobos actually develops this section. It's fantastic the way he does it. Thank you very much for staying until the end. This has been part of the Villalobos 12 and 12 challenge and it's been hosted by classicalguitarrocks.com. There are a ton of lessons there now, especially covering Villalobos' entire output. So if you're looking to level up your playing and advance your techniques, head over and grab yourself some six string inspiration today.